we're in a we're having a is this thing on moment <laughs> well it was more like hello 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 a little echoey this morning <laughs> Happy first show of 2016, Great Northern Sex Cast. Yay. Happy New Year. Woo! Holy moly. What'd you guys do? Colleen Bertino and Michael Radke? Oh, hey. Um, I went out of town, actually. I went to Black River Falls and seen the in-laws, so okay. it was fun. No, I uh, went out to dinner and then went over to a friend's house, and you know, and then, like, we got there about 20 minutes before midnight, and then you know, we said Happy New Year to everyone, and then left like 20 minutes after midnight. It was outstanding. That's perfect. <laughs> That's outstanding. I love these people. I've known them since I'm 15 years old. Old, but <laughs> so, so much chit chat I want to do. Yeah. So, oh my God. well, we did. Um, you and I did a makeup show on New Year's Eve afternoon, and that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. We went and we worked the store. The store, the liquor store, is hilarious on New Year's. Okay, and um, people are just in there, and it's like you know we're facilitating drunkenness, and it's all good. Um, so that was really kind of a riot. And then we got in the car and we drove back up to uh, the cabin, but we stopped at our favorite little hole in the wall. And everybody was so rocked. And it was so much fun to be stone sober at 11 o'clock when everybody else, on New Year's Eve, when everybody else is completely obliterated. Worth the time. We, we stayed until <laughs> until like 11.55 and that was it. Well, well, has that picture from Manchester, England run across your Facebook feed? The no. one where someone um, snapped a picture and it's just chaos in Manchester. Like cops are helping this person on the ground. Another person has fallen down, is oh holding God. up his pants and is reaching for his beer. There's a woman in heels. I mean, they're comparing it to Renaissance paintings. The guy that's on the ground with the full beer, they're, they're, they're Photoshopping into like, you know, pictures and they're turning it into like uh, impressionist paintings. And they're saying it's got the perfect, um, uh, it, you know, it just, it's just, it's like art. I mean, and it's just obviously so chaos in this picture. So I'm sure it's run across other people, folks' feeds and stuff like that. Oh, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is a hoot. And it is, it is uh, obviously just a, a few zillion drunk people. <laughs> <laughs> people. Drunk people are highly entertaining. They are um, very entertaining. Yeah. And, so, you know, I took a picture. I just put it up on my Facebook feed today. I don't know if you saw it, Colleen, but. It was that night. There were two guys sitting next to us. We just ran in and bellied up and, you know, got a quick drink. But there was um, pizza remnants, and it was disgusting. And there, there are pizzas all over their two little bar stool space, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there are drinks and, and then two smartphones looking like bar shrapnel, mm -hmm. you know, sitting there. And I, I just took a picture, and I, I put it up today, and I said, you know, this is snapped, you know, in public. I wonder what their apartments look like. Oh. Like, really? <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my God, so funny. Well, happy, happy 2016. And you know, I was, I was noticing something and the word I'm going to use is going to make you giggle, but um, the Great Northern Sex Cast has actually straddled three years because we started as a tail of 14. <laughs> we did 2015 and now we're in 16. So this is kind of cool. Yeah, it is. It's really, yeah, we straddled it. it. Yeah. I hadn't and, thought about that. And it's like those twins. Did you hear about the twins that were born? Like one was born like at 1159 and the other one was born at 12. Yeah, oh, one. one. So they're born in different years. So they get to have they get to have their own birthdays too. That's brilliant. That's, that's, that's really nice. Cool. So it's uh, they can always have a, a week of birthday or you weekend can't of plan birthday. That, can you? You cannot plan that. No, <laughs> that's awesome. God, that is kind of cool. Well, and this is leap year, by the way. So all those little February twenty nine babies. <laughs> Get to have finally get the birthday freaking party i know i know one person Do and you? yeah he has uh uh you know just gets to have a birthday every now you know every four years <laughs> you know if i we were talking about this if i if i were born on a february 29th i would say nope i'm right now i'm uh i'm 20 one <laughs> you know, i would choose to only add a year every yeah year, I, would, right? I would only be um Let's see, four. And I know, right? It's hard yeah, to do yeah, I know. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do the math. I'm just going to say I'll be 23. Yeah. <laughs> I like that year. Well, that would make you like four times 23 would be like, so, so I have to go, I'd only be, you're only like 10, like right now. You know, it's really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Pardon me, I'm 10. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it didn't. Uh, yeah, the, the gentleman I'm talking about was uh, was a U.S. Marine too. So it, it, it just you know, it's a big guy, and he joked and said, "Yeah, I'm only five. Or, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> <awesome. laughs> so he was a huge dude, and you know, Marine, he just like, "Yeah, my birthday. I'm a, technically, I'm only this old." <laughs> that's fantastic. So, guys, um, what's what's going on with the stores um, this week? I'm just curious. 
Well, we're uh, uh, recovering from the uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's was was uh, was pretty busy. Uh, we've had a lot of folks sick. We had a lot of folks that uh, we just realized we're not going to make it to the New Year with us, and we had to let go. Uh, you know, you just I, 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 you can't <laughs> leave the store in the middle of the shift and go get a beer. Um, Probably not yeah, such no, a good idea. no. Yeah. Uh, and then we're uh, right now we're just looking forward to uh, uh, Valentine's, and we're. Um, uh, the, the meeting this morning was, uh, let's see, when do we want to put the new slat wall into Bloomington? When is the new security systems going into these other stores? Uh, you know, just stuff, yes. you know, back, uh, back to the, you know, regular grind. And it was really nice to think about how much we got accomplished last year. I mean, several stores got major redos. Uh, just, you know, nice to, you know, focus on the, on the on the nuts and bolts, you know, we sp- you know we spent the last three years really focused on on getting the right merchandise mix again because things change, oh, sure. you know. And uh, n- now that we've got that nailed down, we got the new uh, uh, new websites nailed down. It's time to work on the you know the actual physical you know stores. That is so cool. Um, it's just fun. It's like, well, new it's nice. It's changed. You know, I've been with the company for eight years and seen these cho- stores changing like they have because a lot of them have been the same way for a long time. Yeah. But we're actually revamping, painting, new slat wall, new counters. We're, we're really giving them a nice facelift as well yeah, overdue. And, and people change, and, it, and, and it's like this for any retail. And it's, you know, it's going to be this. Um, when, when folks change packaging or when my items change, how you display things, how, I mean, everything changes when something used to show up just shrink wrap to a card is different than when it's in a lovely gift box Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know you just you have to think about where it goes it's not just hey that's a cool product let's put it in the store is it where does it go in the store uh you know you know my mom wants to put everything on the counter i'm like well you can't put everything on the counter because you need some place for someone to come up and buy things and you know and and my philosophy is there's always room and I'll make it. I pretty much make it fit. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She does. Sometimes I admit, I'm like, okay, the, the, the item has to, you know, the inanimate object has defeated me for the most part. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll you know, make it fit in there. It'll fit until it don't fit right. no more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so and true. So, so many, many things. Many things. things. Oh. And, you know, just, you know, it, it doesn't really make any difference what you sell. I mean, you still have your basic stuff i mean you know you know landlords getting a hold of you to make sure you've got your you know your insurance paperwork in and and um making sure that uh, when we had our ice storm that everybody had enough uh, ice scrapers <laughs> you just, you know, Isn't it weird? it's all over it's the stuff. it's all over the place and then you know and then a discussion about hey someone actually you know uh, we saw an advertisement for a new product that may or may not be out yet um for a a, a beaded uh butt plug and we went well, that's just cool. It, 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 it's very rare that you get the Tuesday meeting, everyone, uh, you know, in the office to just look and go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, because it's actually, it, it, it's an innovative product. Now, it's not made by a U.S. company, and Tara's looking into it, you know, but we're like, well, this is cool. And if it does well, everyone would knock it off anyway, so yeah. <laughs> you can go yeah. through there. But just looking into products, I mean, I spent um, a week uh, adding uh, shoes to the website. Oh, that really, really I like shoes. Did you get some good ones? I can't. Oh, they're what'd gorgeous. What'd you get? Well, I put in. Um, Talk to me. I, no, I, I love I, shoes. Oh. Well, a lot of them are shoes for strippers and dancers. Okay. Other ones um, that I'm going to be putting in have more of a, a steampunk or a cosplay feel. Um, other ones do will uh, will work really well for like boudoir or, or burlesque photography. But the thing is, is that the, the company that I can drop ship from because it's drop ship. Uh, you know, you know, ordering online, they have thousands of pairs. But if I put in that many, that means I have to maintain that many. <laughs> <laughs> and and they change, part. you know, so I'm looking and then and then so we came across a couple of um, guidelines that made sense. One, if a item goes up to size 16, it's obviously been a very good seller. And it's good for um, guys that like to wear um, shoes and, and trans women. Okay. So, so, so if you see something that goes up to a 16, it's a long time That's seller is going through there. Yeah. Uh, I learned that if you, uh, that a six inch heel is for amateurs. And so the strippers, I should go for the seven, eight, uh, seven and eight inch heels. Platform, though, they do too. have a platform because usually it's like a five inch platform and then a, a uh, and, you know, like an eight inch heel or okay. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Good God. I mean, I... yeah, but there are, then there's also the fetish shoes, which are the ones that look like ballet slippers with the, with the, with the six or eight inch heels. 
So those are uh, those are fetish and, and bondage stuffs. They're you know it. it they look like, uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, like you said, they're not made really to be, you know, walked in. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, and so there's a you know selection of things that I'm going through, and but I'm like, oh, this is cool, this is cool, and then you know I'll go on and I'll, and I'm like, oh, man. and uh, shoes, I love <laughs> shoes. So I'm gonna put fifty, sixty pair on of. You know, and and then well, some of those will have you know different colors and stuff like that of Sweet. of things that you can you know you can get, and they just kind of and you know I'm like oh I want this and I want this and I've just really really had to um, you know, turn on the editing brain <laughs> because yeah. there's just only it's so hard. much, and then there's a new catalog and some of the stuff isn't even available for six months yet, and um, people have joked about the '80s being back. Oh my God. The neonness, and I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll might put a few of these on, but the, the, the thing is, is if you're, if you're dancing and you're in black light, they look spectacular. Okay. So I get why they exist, yeah. but some of these um, obviously are new, and they only go up to like size ten. Well, yeah, it's not gonna work for us. It's not gonna work. And I want some, you know. So I, they need to have a little bit of a track record, I think, before they go into the. Yeah, the we website. need to cater to our, our crossdressers and our guys, you know, because oh, we have a sure. lot of guys that come in uh. and try on boots and heels and stuff like that. So anything we do like to put on uh. our site is going to at least go to a fourteen to a sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it was uh, um, only a few, like I said, I know, mm-hmm. or a little bit less than that, but that we had uh, uh, Tim was talking this morning about him when he was working at Lakeville that a gentleman came in and bought a pair of boots and they're for him and he came back like within an hour or so and had to buy another pair of boots because when he got home his wife said those are nice and we're the same size so they're not my boots that's <laughs> so, awesome. and, and I just went that's one of the most adorable things I think I've heard oh, for a fantastic. long time. Oh my God. And then we saw them. This was quite a number of years ago that when that, a couple of companies tried to do big um, uh, sex expo conventions and stuff like that. And he did, in fact, see that um, couple uh, both wearing the boots. And then there was a girlfriend and another friend. They were all dressed up, some of them matching outfits. And they just all had on the same boots. And it was – she. and I go, really, once again, one of the most adorable things I think I've ever heard. Oh so they were. It's yeah. very convenient. They wear the same size. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a little unusual. That is. I think that was that's, that's, that's Yeah. Well, she, I, okay. I gotta know what do the boots look like. I mean, well, I'm just... pretty sure they were over the thigh, um, up thigh high, mid thigh, um, stiletto heel, black lace up patent oh, leather boots. Cute. Yeah. yeah. You okay. know. Total standby. I'm pre- yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they were. Total standby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh my god. Oh, okay. I, um, okay. I have a weird. Sorry, question. I was blathering. No, no <laughs> I, she's I, in shoe land. I'm telling no, you, you just I, get her no, going. I, no, I'm not ready to leave shoe land. Uh, that was my question. No, uh, here's what I want to know. So, like, you know how um, male and female, like, like right now, shoe sizes are. <clears throat> excuse me. Shoe sizes, like, if it's a man's eight, it's a woman's nine. Is that how the shoes? Work it's in- about two sizes. So let's say that you wear a size 12 men's, you're going to want a size 14 in women's because the shoe company we're doing only does whole sizes. Okay. And it's going through there. So it's about a two size difference. Okay. Cause I was going to say 16. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. You know, that's which like, is, yeah, which would be a size 14 uh, women's, but, uh, 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 a size 14 men's. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so which, size sixteen women's, size fourteen it's men's. Confusing, isn't it? It, it mm-hmm. is. No, but I was just curious about it. And okay, I just have a small, slight, funny. Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason, I have this amazing divining rod talent for being able to buy shoes for the boyfriend without him being there, which is really weird, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm out with a girlfriend, <laughs> and I found a line of shoes that really he just freaking loves, right? And I said, hey, I just want to see if I can grab. You know, uh, Carl needs blah, blah, blah. Let's just duck in here. And she starts looking, well, what about these? I said, sweetheart, no, no, no. We don't look at the styles. First, we go and see if there's a size 13. And then we work backwards from there. (laughs) And she goes, size 13? I said, "Mm mm-hmm. She goes, congratulations. (laughs) I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, you go, girl. (laughs) Yeah. That was funny shit. Okay. Oh, guys, I found some stuff today. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, in getting ready for the show over the last few days that I just, I'm sorry. Okay, my favorite new thing, passenger shaming. Have you seen this? No, not, but no. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to be entertained. Oh. And I'm going to feel bad about being entertained all at the same time. Um, no. <laughs> no? I, okay. I was guffawing, okay, mm-hmm. at these pictures. So passenger shaming, this is fantastic. And I think that if this gets out there, it could make the world a better place for all of us travelers. Okay, so these are photos snapped on airplanes of people you absolutely do not want to be sitting next to. And the link has gone to Web Wizard Meg, and you know you can mm-hmm. go and look at these. 
holy mother of God, I was falling over. I mean, I mean these is, are the uh, folks that put the, like their stinky feet through the side and, you know, oh, and all that sort of stuff. Oh, there's, there's a lady in her, you know, mid to late sixties with her big, scary bra, her shirts flipped completely up and her ample gut <laughs> and her big boobs, which I'm sure are long and pendulous outside of that scary bra <laughs> that she's wearing. Um, she's just kind of splayed across her seat and you can see the other people like, you know, cringing away, trying to, you know, hug So the... she's like sound asleep and Oh yeah. And she's and, like, and, and the... Woo! She's like right there. <laughs> oh yeah. And then, <laughs> then there's a dude that stands up with a good four inches of butt crack oh. and mm -hmm. butt billowing out. And then there's a dude with his feet. There's all you can see is the feet up. And this guy mm -hmm. has to be like eight feet tall. You can see these feet on the back of the other poor person. Okay, so this is he's like V shaped if he's got his like you know he's Absolutely. Sick. And he's mm -hmm. like down oh my god, there's and then there's a picture of a couple crapped out and it, they didn't try this because they're both completely, but the hand, it looks completely obscene. And the woman that's sitting next to them up against the window is so ungodly uncomfortable. <laughs> You've got to look at these pictures. This is fantastic stuff. It will be on the mm -hmm. Great Northern Sex Passenger Shaming. I got to check it's, that out. We got to start doing it. Uh, uh, no, I, I uh, the, the only time that I, I haven't really been all that, um, I tend to get air sick. So I will pay extra to get the aisle seat. So mm. it tends to, <laughs> I tend to be uh, well away <laughs> some of the weirdos. Yeah. Uh, and, but then again, my, um, my, uh, uh, my expectations for air travel are so low now. I'll, if, if, <laughs> if I can get a non-vomit covered seat, because I did good on a plane once and the seat I was supposed to be sitting on was still covered in vomit. It hadn't been cleaned. I've seen that too. I've, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Too. Um, so really this is, this is my, my only expectation to this right now is I just hope for a non-vomit color oh. covered seat. Oh. And at that point I just, I don't care anymore. I mean, just th that's it. I mean, I, I understand what it is. I, I wish that I wasn't old enough to understand what air travel used to be like. <laughs> When, it, when people dressed up and it was a big deal. You know, I don't and... mind the fact that I can wear comfy clothes on the plane. No, I that know, one but... I That one I give, but I just, you know, being able to, um, you know, get up out of your seat without, um, you know, pretty much having to pass your sexual history to the person that you're rubbing against. <laughs> um, you know, to get out to, you know, if you are, if you do get stuck in the, you know, window or, or middle seat yeah. is, uh, uh, you're just like, oh my God. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, you treat people like cattle, they act like cattle. Oh, mm -hmm. oh God. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. But I mean, you guys have to look at these pictures because I just about absolutely fell over. So, okay. Um, tale of two unweddings is the note that I made for us on our thing. Okay. Okay. So we, we had two engagements fall out, two separate news stories that came out. And one was a guy, I'm sorry, this, this absolutely slayed me, I guess, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how common it is for guys to do engagement rings, but um, he uh, had a band that was his engagement ring and everything went completely wrong. And he had to show up to a fire station in uh, Hampshire, England um, and say he couldn't get it off. He tried soap. He tried everything and asked the firefighters to saw the ring off of his hand. And I love the quote. He was very pleased that we could help him. Does that <laughs> just sound like a But here's the thing. They're all bored. They're stuck in the state. No fires. Mm -hmm. So let's saw the engagement ring off the dude. Let's, mm -hmm. why not? It's Saturday. <laughs> right? Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, if you, you know, if you're to the point where, you know, that you, you're, you want this ring off so desperately <laughs> that you're willing to, uh, uh, you know, destroy it. <laughs> Possibly so, lose a finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how close is that saw blade going to come to my hand? Well, the EMTs were on scene, so it was all a good little package for me. Well, I, suppose. I mean, it's oh. not like they're getting the saws all in there. Right, it's it's, I, it's pretty much, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I and I could be wrong about this, I think it's more of like a diamond coated wire that you slip under, and then they pull up and saw through things. Okay. I, I like I said, I'm. Get out I the could jaws be wrong, of life or but something, yeah, but know, it's. I'd be afraid of that. It's bad. It's, it's mm -hmm. really bad. Um, Sydney, Australia. Another guy, engagement falls out. Picture of this ring is, un it's very pretty. And um, he had heard all the nightmare stories about trying to pawn it, trying to sell it, and he didn't want to be insulted. So he put it up on Reddit with a sincere offer for a deserving couple. He said, you know, this didn't work out for me, but I'm just going to give this like amazing mm -hmm. diamond ring. Um, and there's like, it's really a heartwarming kind of deal. He picked a couple that had kind of a really interesting story and they had to prove that they were a couple and, you know, he, he did and it then, right. You know, and they weren't going to pawn it themselves, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> right. And so, no, but it was really pretty. I thought that was kind of, that was kind of a cool, happy new year kind of deal. Um, okay. Tell the truth. The nut jobs that come into the store, every once in a while you get them, right? A few. 
Yeah, I mean, but it's not really any different than than anybody else. I mean, occasionally, you know, most you know, there are folks that are that are don't like that you can't you know return a, a bodily fluid covered toy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I and I can't. You know, I'm I'm just not going to make those folks happy. But for the but for the most part, you know, and occasionally, I, I you know, I have to ask someone to if they're a little too inebriated to to leave the store. Mm-hmm. But it, I think after 35 years, you know, we no longer have anyone walking in wondering where the back room is. We're like, <laughs> no, this is the store. <laughs> there's no hidden rooms. There's no yeah. booths or nothing like that. I think, yeah. I think uh, restaurant staff probably get the worst. I would I would say hands down. And mm-hmm. there's a great there's a well it's a bad story but a good ending, out of Indiana of all places. Um, you know you would think in the polite sort of uptight Midwest that this wouldn't happen. But this customer on New Year's Eve, this girl posted on their Facebook page a, a place called Kilroy's Bar. She was incensed that a woman or a junkie was wheeled out of the restaurant on a stretcher and ruined her meal and it made it harder for her to get wait staff's attention and da 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 da. So the response from the manager of this place, again, Megan will have this up for you to read. You've got to read it. Um, he writes back and says, thank you so much for sharing your commentary here on our page. It lets the rest of the same world know how many disgusting people we truly have to deal with. Mm -hmm. That was an elderly woman who had just suffered a heart attack. And not that you're curious, but she did survive. (laughs) And blah, 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 blah. Sorry to wreck your dinner. Just set her on her ass. (laughs) Oh, man. No, most folks really have, I mean, there are folks that I think like to argue for arguing arguing mm-hmm. sake and it's it's really frustrating and we really do try and be as nice as possible to them until it's time for me personally to be not nice to them uh, but that's my job mm-hmm. yeah and uh but it just i i do find it uh you know quite you know like you know go back to the airplane you know i'm if, if a kid's having an issue i look at the parents if the parents are trying i don't care yeah you know, and I don't, and I don't know what's go- going on. You know, going on there. Um, you know, just, there's a lot going on in the other person's brain that I don't know, mm-hmm. and so it's one of the. I, and I'm like, ah, you know, I will get through this. <laughs> yeah. But if the parent is um, sitting around having another drink while their uh, kid has a. Uh, um, is uh, being uh, uh, needs help or this or that, and I have to reach over and untangle their headphones and put their phone. In, then I'm a little cranky. <laughs> Maybe I've possibly done this. <laughs> yes. you think? Sounds like it. The example's a little yeah. too spot on, Colleen. <laughs> so it is. I mean, I've I've traveled with my daughter since she was very very tiny, and it was you know, it was worth the uh, uh, you know, if if I can afford to travel, then I can afford to check my bag so that I can bring extra stuff on the plane for my kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you just, yeah. it, it's part of it. You can't, no, my, mind you, you know, they could have, you know, maybe it's a family emergency. Maybe they don't, you know, I mean, I get that. But for the most part, when I see someone having a couple extra cocktails and ignoring their uh, brand new blended family on the plane, mm-hmm. yeah, then I'm annoyed. Yeah. Well, here's the, I want you to backtrack just a little bit too. Um, when you talked about it was your job personally to be not nice to customers that are just a pain in the ass. I can't, you know, you're a really hard person to imagine being not nice. Honestly. I mean, isn't she kind of like, <laughs> you've probably seen it, but I have, but I mean, seriously. Can I plead the fifth? Yeah. <laughs> My boss is sitting right in me. But, but Colleen, I'm just kind of curious, like seriously, because you don't look like you have that chip or act like you do. I have in, in fact explained to someone that, you know, I have, I, you know, when I had a toddler, I said, I don't allow my toddler to act this way. And you certainly don't get to either. And, you know, they usually go through there and I have explained that we, you know, we have a very longstanding policy and if you're too ignorant to figure it out, I'm, you know, that's not my problem. <laughs> a few times and I've told, you know, I've told, you know, I said, you know, and I said, you know, and I said, you were no longer allowed at the stores. Mm-hmm. I do not need <laughs> folks that are that negative, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm usually fairly calm when I'm doing it. And then, and I always inform them that we're, we are now done with the conversation. But, you know, when I, and, and it's, and it gets, you know, sometimes, you know, folks don't understand that banking has changed. I don't have access to your credit card anymore. I can't just, you know, or, you know, just because you say there's something wrong and believe me, it is so rare that it's actually our issue. Um, just because you say there's something, you know, funky on your credit card, I just don't automatically go ahead and credit something. One, I don't have access to your card. Two, the rules are in place now that you have to go through your bank 
And they just don't want to hear that. And I don't know how else to get across to someone that if you think there's something wrong with your, 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 your bill, that you call your bank, you put a whole, you know, they look into it, they call my processor, my processor calls me, and there's, it's the way it works. I, <laughs> Well, I mean, with identity I have, theft, I have, glad. I yeah. have no way of doing it now. You know, there's been a few times when when we've seen that there's been um, um like, oh, okay, this got screwed up. It didn't, you know, I can look, but still, I can't. Once uh, something's been closed that night, you need to come back with your card. I don't have access. Interesting. <laughs> and it just, and it's like, you know, it, it, you know so. You know, and you just, you, you try and I'll, I'll try and I'll try like four or five different times and they just get, you know, really cranky. And a few times I've had, you know, I've had someone, you know, go on social media and I've had to go on and say, this is what happened. And most folks, when they see someone like that, know that, that this not. person is, yeah, is, mm -hmm. is, and I do run across that, but I'm like, I don't have access to like banking stuff or I don't have any more, you know, it's going through there. I, there's just certain things that we have in place. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that are completely out of my control, and uh, and it just it, they just don't and they and they really think that if they yell loud enough, or if they start throwing um, uh, sexist or racist or slurs at my employees, that something's going to change about that. And yeah. if you go anywhere down that path, your ass is hot there yeah. so fast. I don't give a shit. And the thing that gets me the most is they'll start swearing at my employees, and that's when they're 86. I'm like, I will not let nobody cuss at my employees. They're already mm -hmm. taking so much shit from people yeah. that they don't need somebody throwing their swear words yeah. at them. And because they're just the folks, too, and anyone that's in retail knows that if you just – Folks that think that I don't care if it's the person making coffee or checking you out at holiday or the person that's working at the counter at Cub or Target, that somehow that the service person is less than. Right. And I'm like, oh, oh no. and, and you know, you know, that's an interesting and it, point. And it is, it is, it is, uh, you know, it is very, very frustrating. So like I said, I mean, we sell something that not everybody sells, but for the most part, our, you know, our experiences are exactly the same as everybody else. Yeah. And you know, it's funny though, cause like with, with the, the great recession, I mean, I knew a lot of people that were like corporate bosses or whatever displaced that worked at caribou's and things like that. You have no idea who's on the other side of that counter. Right. And, and they, you know, there was um, a news story I was listening to just the other day about how many college graduates right now are parking cars. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a weird, you know, world and, and that's a very, very dangerous assumption. I mean, to make, I think. Yeah. And just, you know, whoever, whoever it is down there, whether or not they've got their PhD and they can't find a job or whether or not they're working their way out of, of, of homelessness, right. that person is another human being mm -hmm. and they Indeed. deserve the exact same respect. And that, it, it, oh, like I said, I, I think one of the reasons I was a, a cook when I was younger and not a, a server uh, was the fact that I didn't have, especially when I was younger, that someone would have treated me that way. I would have told them. Oh. <laughs> I was a server for many years, and yeah, they abuse you. You got to be on there back and call every second because your tip depends on it. You know, oh, yeah. you want to do the best to make the best money as you can, but some of the hoops that they make you jump through, it's like, are you serious? You no, know, I get that, and and I'm I'm like really good, and I'm I'm a twenty percent plus kind of tipper or yeah. whatever. But I did have a thing, and I promise we're going to talk about blowjobs here in a minute. Oh, good. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, but no, you I were tipping it. on your blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I mean, I try to get to. I mean, you know, we'll see. Okay. Um, no, but I went into a place that I really like. I mean, it's a place. It's kind of a little hangout. I have lunch there, like you know, once a week. And I went in there, and it was kind of a weird deal. My birthday was on a Sunday this year. And long story short, I was waiting for the boyfriend. He was doing some stock stuff and whatever. So I went over to get some lunch. And this bartender, you know, I just wanted a salad and a glass of wine, right? He was just an asshole. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, he was – I felt like I had walked into, like, and just completely inconvenient – inconvenience. I have never been so alienated by somebody uh, in my life. And he never, oh my God, he was terrible. And I sat there, you guys have no idea the agony I went through about the tip when it came. I mean, the mm -hmm. whole thing, I mean, I didn't enjoy it. And I, I, and I was already feeling kind of crummy and it was my birthday mm -hmm. and this dude was mean to me. And I'm like, this is just wrong. And so I, I out of like, you know, let me say it was 20 bucks. I left $2 and I wrote him a note and I just said, you know, this is really hard for me. I always tip, you know, like 20%. But I said, you not only weren't nice or didn't do your job, you actually upset me. Yeah. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the next time I went in there, there was a bartender that I really, because I was just sitting at the bar so I can plug in my computer. She was like, I told her about it. And, oh, my God, they bought my lunch. It was the <laughs> But it, seriously, what is wrong? 
I, you know, you get that every once in a while. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, of all your peers who suffer, how could you act like this? And how do you still have a job again? I don't get it. Right. That's sad. No, it's ridiculous. It so, was terrible. So, so, so it wasn't like you were getting, you know, tipped for a blowjob. Damn. Okay. Damn. Okay. We will later. <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys know, do you know what half thongs are, Michael? Half thongs? Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I ask. <laughs> you, well, we sell a lot of really tiny things, and it, it's probably something that has a different name than than we're familiar probably. with. Okay, so th there's a new thing out there called a C-string, mm -hmm. and it's for women. And basically, it looks like a headband. Oh yeah, that clamps your crotch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like, no, no, it's, it's been around. They're truly yeah. horrible. And okay, so then in in the story on the C-strings, and and women hate it, but men love them. Because they want to see those out on the beach well, or whatever. The Santa hat was one oh, of those. That was. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was technically a C-string. Yes. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. They do not look comfy. No. Well, but the half lungs. So in investigating this subject fully, as I always do before we come into the show, <laughs> a half lung picture, picture like a, um, okay, a Speedo that um, really is just like a cup that reaches around on one side. So there's one hip completely open. Oh, yeah. I've seen those. Have you seen those? Yes. Yes. So would you wear one? I don't think I could. Why? That's... You're built well, enough. No, no. Well, the thing is, is that it just, I mean, it, it, yeah, you could wear one, but you're not moving. <laughs> the guy's photograph and the pictures I saw were walking. Yeah, you know, we've run across time. I think across... it'd be hot and everything. I just, you know, I don't, it depends on, you know, if the, the pouch and everything, if the pouch is going to fit because it'll just pull that thing right off, <laughs> you know, yeah. because what's holding that on? Was that the, uh, I think one of the man meat Monday pictures was we that, did was that, was one. that, was that combo where the two guys and we're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. And I think we had an under, underwear line. I'm not sure if it's Andrew Christian, but I think we had an underwear line that has that in their catalog. And I'm like, Oh, they're hot and everything, but I just don't know how it would stay on. Well, in, in order to, to stay on, it's going to have to clamp your junk somehow. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see that being a good thing. Yeah, and I'll have to check because I know that uh, before I put all the shoes on and a few other things, I put on a few more pieces from Greg Holm. That might be and, where it's from. And I'll have to check and see whether or not that it's in there. Um, but generally, for as little um, fabric that there is, there's a lot of construction and work to these things. Oh God, I know. So they tend to be very expensive. Yeah. You know, and they, they actually should be like, I do understand that bras should be expensive because they're a bugger. I mean, to put those things together. Right. They really are. I get that. Uh, yeah. Those half those, and they were called half thongs. Half thongs. I'm going to have to look that up. You it looks to, very hot. Yeah, I can like imagine, I said, but the man kidneys, no. No. Are oh, goofy. I yeah. That's just that's a Borat thing. That's a, yeah, that, yeah. Those that, those just crack me up. That yeah. yeah we we that. we've sold. We 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 had them in the past. There was a company, we, and I'd say that in the late we still do actually. late eighties, early nineties, and then as a regular thing, and now as more of a specialty thing, yes. they still sell. And they come in like neon green and stuff. I think we do have them. I've seen them at my Minneapolis store for sure. But okay. there are some guys that are you know specifically looking for that Borat look. Well, and the picture <laughs> that I saw, the dude had a smoking. Body. I mean, there's no question, but it just looks so preposterous. I just couldn't get past it. I was like, uh, no. And they always photograph them outside, and I'm thinking, this is some tan lines that I don't want to deal with. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> I don't understand that part. What she said. Right. What yeah. She said. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, wait. We we got to skip through. I mean, we got to talk about the guy braider in a minute. But okay, let's talk blowjobs for just a second. Blowjobs. Okay. So you know, there's been weird conversations pop popping up where you know sometimes. You know, you just run into people and this comes up, right? And, you know, I, I've never understood women who refuse to do this. Like, they're like, they have a thing about it. And, and I'm like, where did you get that? And how did you not ever, like, just try to push through it? What a bad thing to say. <laughs> Suck no, it up. <laughs> That's even better. Um, no, but it's like, I, I thought, you know, you're really kind of missing out because it's, it's it, if, if you say that that's completely off the table, you're taking yourself out of a large segment of available guys I yeah think. don't you i mean yeah probably i mean it depends I mean, there's got to be more than just i don't like blowjobs behind something like that because you're talking about uh you know a sort of a, a you know the, the the whole body is sexual mm -hmm. <laughs> to some mm -hmm. extent and you know if you're and if you're limiting yourself you know it, you know it, if if it's because um you know, you had issues when you were younger, there's abuse, you know, there's, if, there, if there's psychological issues behind it, that's fine. But if it's just, 
or you know some people i guess might think of it as a, a as a dominant submissive thing i don't know but then again there's also the op, you know it's not like he can't go down on you or somewhere right. or she can so i don't it, it's it's all a, you know I, I there's a lot it just seems weird that you would that you would just wholesale say no to something right. if you don't have some like you yeah. said complete you know mm-hmm. really traumatic ptsd thing okay First of all, let me address what you said about the dominant submissive. I have never felt submissive giving a blowjob. In fact, I don't think you could be in any more control of a dude than when you've got the a team yeah. that close to his back. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, yeah. okay? I sure wouldn't want to piss you off. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, there's there's that. But so, okay, this, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with people over the last few weeks and about this and women, and I'm just sitting here going, you know, if you're that close-minded to this, you're going to be a real motherfucker when you're like 65 because you're oh. going to be a real serious prune. I mean, that's yeah. just my, you know, take on it because they, they just, just no, absolutely not. So this past weekend, <laughs> I was going downtown bang and um, thinking about it. And, you know, one of the complaints that women have, it's like, well, they grab my head and they they make me... You know, and I don't like it when they push on my head and, you know, and all this different kind of thing. And so I I was thinking about this at the time and I'm going, okay, here's one of the things that girls need to be pulled aside and taught (laughs) is that if you're going to try this and, you know, in the right situation where everybody's old enough and consenting, et cetera. You got to learn how to breathe when you're doing it. Yes. Number one. And you know this, Michael. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, and, and there's, there's a, no, but I mean, and yeah. that can make all the difference in the world as far as your personal comfort. Mm-hmm. And then you can start to focus on the sensual side of it if you're not trying to breathe. And I know that if you don't realize that, and I think a lot of women get nervous, you know, and they, 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 they're like, I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. And I can't breathe. I, I, I give up. And I started thinking about that, you know, and I thought, okay, okay, they got to learn how to breathe and all of that. But then on the other hand, the guys, they do need to understand, don't push. Mm-hmm. You can touch a little bit, but pushing, because you don't it's know. It's more like guiding them. You don't have to shove them down on your mm-hmm. junk. You can guide them where you want them, because the guy mm-hmm. knows what he wants. Yeah. So if, you know, to help the woman, he can guide them to that situation, but don't feel like it, feel like a force. A little conversation. What? It's amazing how many times it gets back to a little conversation. Yeah, <laughs> it always does. That works, that doesn't work. Yeah. See what's going through there. And if you're not, I mean, there's a lot more going on if you're not comfortable talking about what you like or don't like yeah. during sex. Then I won't be and I don't care whether it's, <laughs> you know, whether it's like, okay, that's too, you know, whether it's nipples or whether it's, uh, you know, by the way, you know, that ear thing? No. You know, you just yeah. care, whatever it is, you just, I don't, if you're not talking about it. So there's probably a lot more going on there where they're just, uh, you know, where you're just freaked out about conversations about sex in general. And you realize that that's going to be a big conversation yeah yeah and you know you just you know and if you just say no i'm not going to do it you avoid that whole conversation yeah and, and if there's other situations you know like, like towards cleanliness you know try doing it in the shower you know make sure the shower first even try doing a blow job in the shower yep. if it's the whole gag reflex you know they make things like you know a numbing agent that will help you with your gag reflex we have flavored lubes and everything to help it taste better so you're not even knowing you're sucking on dick it's like you're sucking on a lollipop yeah you know and treat it like a lollipop ladies i'm telling you the guys will love it well and you know what i was thinking too about that because I, ha- I have to say it comes up with uh boyfriend all the time and we we do discuss blowjobs because you know he loves them oh, and yeah. i don't mind and you know that sort of thing but it's like i think that if you could say to a guy all these women you know maybe if you could learn to separate how much of this is fear and how much of this have i told myself you know what what have i convinced myself because i think if any woman went to a guy and said look I'm not really comfortable with this. I don't really think I'm good at it because I think that's a lot of it too. Mm -hmm. Would you let me try to figure it out and help me without doing these things that scare me, bug me, Mm -hmm. perturb me as I'm doing it? Like, because, you know, if somebody does grab your head and I've had that happen and I've said, okay, Mm -hmm. you know what? One more time and that's that. That's scary. They're taking away your breath. You know, you're like, you can't breathe. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But if you could have that conversation, I don't think I know a single guy, Michael, that would say, no, I will not let you improve your blowjob skills. Right, no. If you are motivated to learn, I'm not going to let you know. Uh, no. Come back when you know what you're doing. And, you know, but and I can also see that if someone is with someone that's not willing to reciprocate, you know, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, th- th- there's a whole other conversation there, too. Yeah. yeah if you uh, if it's good enough for the goose, it's good enough for the gander. If you want me to go down on you, yeah. then you better at least give something a little back. At least try. Make an effort. Mm-hmm. And learn about what I like, you know? Because each guy is totally different. Some people like their nuts rubbed. Some like them pulled, you know? I'm, mm-hmm. I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's just, it's different. And, then, you know, and, and, different. and I don't care who the two people are in that relationship. If you're not talking about <laughs> what, you need what works for you. 
that's going to be it. And I think that there is something about, um, it, there, there is something about the blowjob that does, ha you know, about oral sex that just people will panic about. I think that, you know, that, that they're not, that they're freaked out that they're not doing all right. Right. I think expectation and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's expecting his great blowjob, but you know, I'm pretty novice at it. So mm. it's a lo it's learning together. You know, if you're planning on being with this person for a while, I would say at least work through it and work it out together. Yeah. There's there's many things to give it a try, you know. I, to, I just can't see any kind of a downside <laughs> going downside <laughs> yeah, to to um sitting there and saying, I, I you know, I'm I'm insecure in my abilities here. Could we could we try to work yeah. on it? I actually seen this and really cool video. It's called grapefruiting. It is hilarious. I will have Megan find it and put it on there, but she does this whole thing with the grapefruit and it actually makes it more enjoyable for, because it's a citrus, so it makes the blowjob a lot better, but the women enjoy it and it feels like, because you got the grapefruit around the guy's dick, You're so it actually me. works really good. You can squeeze it and everything, but it works perfectly. So I'll have Megan find it. It's called grapefruiting. But when the woman, the video, the woman is demonstrating, it actually, she's got the microphone on when she's going down, it's going. <laughs> It is hilarious. So I will have Megan. It's called grapefruiting, and she is a phenomenal lady. Oh, my God. Okay, so we have grapefruit every morning. It's like our oh. thing. Mm -hmm. We do. I mean, and like I, I'm usually up first, so I peel the grapefruit, and I eat my half, and then I leave his half in the fridge. Mm. I think I'm going to core that sucker and <laughs> go, hello. Yeah, so <laughs> you do want the no. skin on it. So you just cut each half on, and you want to end up in each end. Put a hole in the middle and then put it on this dick. But you want him to be blindfolded, so it's an extra sensual thing. <laughs> it's amazing. But the video is just awesome. I'll help Megan find it. But yeah, it's called grapefruiting, and this woman's demonstration oh of it is hilarious. Here, you should, oh. Just so you don't forget, there's a pen here. Write that down. Write that down. I've got to see that. <laughs> um, so real quick, guys. I mean, I had not seen this. It's never come up on the show before. Um, the guy, the guy braider. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually called. What's it actually? It's the octopus pulse and the octopus pulse too. Hot octopus. Mm -hmm. This is a British guy, and you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting, and it's it's a, it's a different sort of a sensation rather than just the up and down like a blowjob mm -hmm. type of thing. But he is, you guys. What I thought was interesting about this article too, and not just the product, is that he's very much into people getting over themselves, and you know, promoting just the idea that sex is not evil. And so he's a really cool guy. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you guys have it in the stores. Yeah, uh, the Burnsville, uh, it's not in all the stores, but it's all available online and uh, available at the Burnsville store, I believe. Very cool. Well, I, I thought this was hysterically funny. They um, advertised for the a job opening as a male sex toy tester. In 24 hours, 2,500 applications uh, from all over the world. And uh, a Londoner ended up winning the the, the job, um, which I thought the job. Okay. No, well, yeah, it is. You know, because a lot of the th I mean, I think it's becoming less and less. I mean, I won't even say year by year. I'll say month by month now, mm -hmm. where uh, men are and women, but well, mostly men are not intimidated by the idea of some uh, mechanical assistance. You know, they're realizing that it, it, it enhances, not replaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, 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 you know, this has been something that's going on. And I think that's why we're getting uh, a lot more. Um, I mean, okay, there was always things that you could just put your dick in and, and, and rub up and down. Mm -hmm. Always masturbators. But they're getting. <laughs> uh, but, Thank you for but, that yes. very direct description. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the thing is, is that uh, there's uh, pumps with rollers and masturbators with vibrators and masturbators that will um, will uh, uh, sort of you know, enclose your penis more. There's uh, they're beaded, they're ribbed mm -hmm. on the inside. I mean, they're they're thinking about um, a little bit more male pleasure versus just you know something to give your hand a break. Mm -hmm. You know, right. um, they're uh, the uh, the fact that they. Uh, the Fleshlight Company came out, you know, with doing, you know, just it's not just your generic, um, you know, uh, 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 fake, you know, vagina. vagina. It's a, you know, it's a, a star, stars one. Yeah, and it's nice feel and everything. It's very soft. It feels supposed to, you know, feel like the real thing. Yeah, and, and the Fleshlight is, yeah. is a brilliant line. Yeah, they're. Brilliant. And we just that. got a couple of uh, what, what, what we just got a couple of new uh, pumps in, and yep. over the over the holidays, and we you know there's the guy braider, but you know the thing is that guy toys have been um, I'd say probably like the past decade. Uh, there was a, one of the first companies to come out was called Aneros, and they were prostate stimulators, hmm. and they were designed for male use, and they've done you know they've done quite well. Some are vibrating, some are just you know um, or or just are solid you know. Um, 
uh, latex, uh, not latex, uh, solid silicone toys or, mm-hmm. or heart, uh, um, the, uh, the line of, um, of a cock rings has exploded over the years because most <laughs> folks are going through there. <laughs> yes. No pun they intended. Have. <laughs> but I mean, the, the whole Screaming O company, um, you know, is designed around that. And then, of course, we I think we spoke about this a couple weeks ago. Um, two new companies that uh, came and spoke to us, um, Perfect Fit and Oxballs. And these are guys that, are, that want something that's... Uh, truly more male oriented. We mm-hmm. talked about the ball sack covers and the vibrating ball sack covers mm-hmm. and the, um, the, the items that you can use, um, butt plugs that are hollow that you can actually have sex with well, while it's in, uh, girth, oh. and, girth mm-hmm. enhancers. Uh, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of real, um, uh, just a lot of products that are made for a little bit, um, uh, stronger use. I mean, there's, there's uh, several items that are called, uh, like, uh, tug, butt plugs so there'll be a loop that goes around your penis or testicles and then it goes underneath and then it you know goes into the butt plug so as you're walking things are tugging and, and stuff like that so oh, as you're okay. yanking on your penis, penis it's tugging, tugging the butt oh. plug so it's mm-hmm. moving it around oh yeah my. it's amazing back up one second i'm still stuck on the butt plugs that you can have sex yeah with they're called in, oh. Oh, ha- oh, help me hollow out. plugs or oh. hollow plugs so yes. I, I, well we'll put a link up to one of the yeah. sites or something like that and it's going through there but what it is is that it's a uh it's it's a larger sheath or a butt plug that you can that has that, that um it has you know strong enough walls now you, you're not going to use this to stop any disease or anything no. like that but it's a way of um it, it you insert it and then you can you know you can person wearing it you can have you know, continue to have sex. Yeah, you can use toys on it. You can use, you know, have anal sex or, you know, sex with it in. But it does help because it's going to protect the walls. It is. The interior walls of the, uh, of of the anus. anus, Yeah, it's pretty cool. I saw that at our Mm -hmm. seminar. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, very right. cool. Well, we, we've got to talk about, um, and of all people, I'm, I'm actually kind of sorry that she's the one that brought this conversation up, but it's it's a good one. Um, why is uh, violence more acceptable than nudity, um, asks Miley Siren. <laughs> well, actually, I saw this this summer, and it's been running across the um, feed again. And probably with everything going on, everyone's, you know, um, everyone's perfectly willing to, um, uh, you know, it, you can go see like a Quentin Tarantino movie and no one's freaking out over the amount of blood and, and, and sex and stuff like that. I don't go see it, but that seems to be much more, that's going to get a, you know, just a rated R movie. Didn't get an NC, you know, 17 rating, but if you had, you know, that amount, let's say the equal amount of sex in a movie, it's R rated. Yeah. Or if people are concerned, I mean, you can have a, a, a plenty of music videos that show, uh, re- uh, revenge or that song about you know keying someone's car or this or that and this is all fun these are all popular things but you know Miley Cyrus gets naked and the whole world goes insane yeah. and it just the really the, the, the fact that the violence is so much more acceptable for everyday consumption than than like a boob or the fact that there's a legislature somewhere that says you know since um, since uh, b- uh, women's nipples are perfectly uh, um since they're allowed to be breastfeeding, I can just grab them, right? Because that's what guys do. Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, no, see, that would be violent and sexual assault. It would be assault. <laughs> it doesn't even, you know, and you know, the, you know, you know that, it, but it'd be perfectly, you know, I mean, you know, it'd be perfectly fine for him to like walk around, you know, uh, carrying it, you know, you know, if someone grabbed him, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't like it very much. And the fact that they just, you know, someone, the, the folks would freak out about a breastfeeding mother. I know. And, and, you know, and not freak out, you know, over other, you know, over other stuff. It's just, you know, that, that, that is more violent or is, it's just, you know, it's fascinating. And if it takes, and I realize that it's something that someone her- that we've thought about at our age livers, but she's in her twenties. And I think there's more folks in her twenties that are going, no, I don't, you know, I'm not ashamed of my body. You know, we've had a lot of body shame, a lot of different mm-hmm. things. And she's obviously not ashamed no, of her body. No, no. <laughs> And it just, you know, or the, or the fact that, you know, we've talked about this before, that Janet Jackson's nipple affected everything more than, than um, I mean, that, that made more changes probably in, in popular culture than, uh, than the folks who were shot on camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You know I what mean, I mean? So, I mean, the fact that, that you know, they, you know the, I think the nipple is the distraction from the violence. Oh, my God. They I mean, can't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, the, the boob flop. 
the, mm -hmm. the, that infamous blue plot. I was still full time employed morning radio with Clear Channel, and I cannot tell you that affected radio harder than it did TV. The the amount of crap that we had to go through, and the threats to lose our licenses, and it was unbelievable because of Janet. And I want to kill her because you know that thing was staged. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Me. yeah. And the thing is, is that once again, it's women's bodies, yeah, not men's. And there was two people up on stage, and no one, you know, and and uh, what's his face didn't barely got a blip on it. Mm -hmm. And it just and it's you know once again it's uh, women's uh, you know women's nipples not men's nipples. And it's, didn't she have it, like it, a it, nipple hugger on it or something too? Yeah. Well, the one of the guys we um, uh, uh, that we had dinner with uh, a couple weeks ago said he's the one that pierced her nipple. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Way cool. Mm -hmm. And so I like I like one degree of separation from Janet Jackson's nipple now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the infamous yeah. nipple. And. It just it you know when it it, it it goes back to the fact that generally when you're freaking out about sex you're freaking out about women having sex but it's perfectly fine for uh for folks to run around and be violent as hell well, and that, nobody freaks out over and that. that brilliant article that we we went over it weeks past on the show of all the ancient like sex stuff that was uncovered from, you were here michael i think on that one probably yeah. i mean we and then when all the british explorers were uncovering the shit that was centuries old that was sex it was like they either hit it or destroyed it. Yeah. It's like, really? Come on. I think they should have more, or more nudity. You know, <laughs> I'm all about that nudity. I, I'm, you know, sign me up. <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, one more news, news item that I do not want to miss on today's show. Massive prick oh. was the headline. Did, uh, this guy in Calgary um, had, uh, he was trying to break a world record. He had 4,745 needles stuck into his body. And I saw a picture of this. It's like absolutely unbelievable. They did this on December 22nd. It took nine hours and 13 minutes to get all of these needles in there. I mean, talking about like um, acupuncture needles or just random or just, or, they're and, like, and this is a guy that does, you know, those, the folks, I mean, there are still things out there, you know, extreme freak shows, the folks that lift things with their testicles and yeah. all that sort of stuff and hang themselves. I mean, there still is some, you know, interesting um, body art modification um, uh, uh, entertainment <laughs> <laughs> out there. So this guy must be, you know, They're doing surgical, stuff like that. Surgical needle piercings. It, they literally, if you see the picture, he, he looks like he's stapled. They, they look like rows and rows of staples. Ooh, if that, I know, right? That's gonna leave a scar. Uh, yeah, but here's the weird thing. Um, he has to wait up to three months to see if it sticks. So I think he has to walk around like this for three months. How do you do that? You don't. Like seriously. You? That's Mass just uncomfortable. You know, I, I mean, I, I have my ears pierced. That's plenty. <laughs> and I know folks that have plenty of piercings and stuff like that. I do know that the tongue piercings are a problem, though. They all mess up your uh, teeth enamel and stuff. I had folks that have to deal with that. Probably affects but, blowjobs, but too. Plenty of, but plenty of other folks, I was like, I think that stuff like that should you know not be encouraged. That might be going a little bit too much. But then again, I mean, it's like the folks that uh, tattoo their eyeballs. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> God, you had to say that out loud. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. I, my thing is, I, you know, I, it's, what is good for everybody else is not good for me, but, but the plugs, you know, when you have to get the biggest plug to your earlobe oh, yeah, hangs yeah. down. Oh, uh, yeah. That's. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, I get that uh, people have been modifying their bodies for centuries and, and, they and, and stuff will. like that, but there always seems to be the folks that will, that, that where you just think, is that safe for you? You know, you get to a point where you just don't understand how that could possibly be safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and that's the point where I'm like, oh, geez. That, and that someone willing to do that, sort of like when folks do too much plastic surgery, that someone's willing to do that to someone. Is that safe for that person? Yeah. And I can't imagine in any way, shape, or form that this could possibly be safe for this gentleman. And I, I uh, yes, consenting adults is consenting adults, but at one point... There's, yeah, you know, like I said, I, I can't imagine that it's safe. No. Watch Nip and Nip Tuck and Botched. Songs. Yeah, mm -hmm. I seen this guy that actually had pecs put in. He was like supposed to be wanting to try to be like um, Justin Bieber or something, but he's having pecs implanted. His whole face has just been redone, and Ew. I think he's getting butt implants at one point. But when do you? When is enough is enough? You know, when are you done? Well, and at what point? I mean, at some point in your life, when you're at a certain age, it's gonna look funny, right? Or 
bad or freakish or whatever. Yeah, 60, yeah. 70 years old and your face looks like 20, but your body looks like it's 60 mm -hmm. or 70. Yeah, know? I mean, and plastic surgery is spectacular. I know that there, oh, yeah. I know that there, there are folks that are going through a lot of, um, you know, uh, a lot of disease or, or cancer or this or that, and you need to have your body yeah. put back together. And they can, like, create nipples now. You still need to have them tattooed the right yeah, color. That's right. But it used to be that you didn't get any nipples. No, I mean, it's obviously they're not going to have the nerve endings and stuff that other ones do. Right. But the fact that that's possible is spectacular. Yeah, we've come and a long way. And it's going way. through there. Um, but, yeah, uh, I just, I, at one point, I just, oh, that's just. It just saddens me. It doesn't make, it makes me feel like they're not comfortable in their own skin, so they're going to try to change it as much as they can, you know, and everybody should be comfortable in their own skin and be happy with what they've been given. Mm -hmm. You know, well put. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, I think I think we should leave people with this, and I'm not going to go through this whole list because it's excruciating. But I I am going to refer to it. It will be up on the site. Um, the 34 worst pickup lines of 2015, <laughs> and the author and these. Oh God, they're they are funny because they're so bad. Okay. Oh. But um, they said they're so bad that they might work. But I did pick a couple that I did think were funny. Okay. Okay. Can I try? You've been a bad girl. Go to my room. Oh, I like that. That's funny. Um, sorry, but you owe me a drink, the person says. Mm. Why? Why? <laughs> I looked at you and dropped mine. Oh. That's funny. <laughs> I would laugh at that. Yes. And this one's sweet. You are everything I never knew I always wanted. <laughs> I like that. It makes you really think. But there's some really, really, really bad ones. Yeah. And I mean, like, truly horrible. Um, so fuck me if I'm wrong, but haven't we met before? I mean, there's a bazillion of them. So, I, ha I have one that wrote down. It's like, your legs must be tired because you've been running through my mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that oh, was like the, the cheesiest one I've ever heard. Oh, God. Do you have any raisins? No? Oh, how about a date? Uh, no, no, no. I'm trying to see if while you're going through some of these, if I can find one that was thrown at my girlfriend the other day. Oh, really? Did when she, she text it to you? She was, uh, oh, she, uh, she screenshotted it. It was on one of the dating sites. Uh, oh, seriously? Like in a, in a match message Ooh. or something? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't, I can't, but it was just, I, I just, just looked at that and went, oh, thank God I'm not out there. Well, now we're all intrigued. So we'll if I had to, find to find uh, if I had to, yeah, but it was just, it was, oh, you just have homework. Yeah, you are to bring that to the next show, Colleen Bertino. And I'm just, and I'm just like, really? This was a lie? Did it? Did it? Did it work? <laughs> Obviously not, considering the fact that, that she's, she's sending it to all of her friends. That she screenshotted it, oh. and uh, I'm just like, I'm pretty sure that there's if there's an air if there's a, a passenger shaming site, I'm pretty sure there's a bad line yeah. or a bad, uh, you know, there sign is. shaming site. I we I, do we I, we may even run across it in the past year. Oh, you know, it's going through there where people were just like, oh. Oh, stay away from people just you know, you know and we're not even talking about the folks that won't take no for an answer and then get abused so we're just talking about really really bad oh my lines. god oh my god yeah i'm no. sure bad pickup lines is probably uh uh it has more than one hit in the year old interwebs oh and it's it'll be out there on our site so next week um, I think we're going to have some of our, we're going to start cycling through some of our fun regulars oh. here on the Great Northern Sex Cast. And any things coming up this week that you guys know that we should be aware of? Oh, just doing a lot of interviews and a lot of hiring. So if anybody's <laughs> looking to lower work at Lakeville <laughs> and Burnsville, okay. <laughs> come and apply. We're a happy company. Everybody loves working with us. As long as you do your job and stop Don't going Don't even go get a beer. Exactly. And especially I expect us to pay for it because they didn't clock out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least they had the class not to expense it. Yeah, yeah. I'll be putting uh, yeah, I'll be putting uh, more shoes online and, yep. and and going through some stuff. So and get ready just, for Valentine's. Oh know? yeah, that's the, the biggest thing. We've got you know there'll be uh, uh, the stuff going in. Uh, Liz is going out and swapping up uh, lingerie and doing some things, and mm -hmm. it's just. Uh, um, it's always, you know, it's always, it's always a busy time of the year <laughs> because we, 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 you don't, we don't really ramp down, uh, from Christmas. We go right into Valentine's, Christmas, which is I'm like talking, Christmas for you. We're mm -hmm. still going from Halloween because we go from Halloween, Christmas to Valentine's. Yeah. So this, you know, few months is just crazy. Nice. But it's great. It keeps it busy. And by the time you know it, winter will be over and summer will be here. I know you guys, it's going to fly. It is. Happy 2016. And um, remember everybody, happy blowing. Happy blowing. <laughs> and we'll be back next week. Work on your blowjobs. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Circular breathing. <laughs>